In this video, I want to show you how to make an access query from more than one table. So notice how we have a bunch of tables over here on the left hand side. So uh, I'll click on the create menu up top, of course, create. Then we'll come over here and we'll click on query design. And you see the new screen. It's called show table. So here you pick your tables. Now, some queries can only come from one table. This one's going to come from more than one. So I want to pick on the customers table, uh, double click on the word customers, and you can see the customers table is in the background over here. Now I'm going to pick on the orders table. Now notice how uh, it found the field customer ID, and that's the field that it, it selected to make the relationship or the link between those two tables. The reason it shows the customer ID, first of all, it's a common field between both tables. And second of all, the customer ID field happens to be marked as a primary key in the customer's table. So it'll always look for a primary key in one of the tables and see if there's a matching field in the other table. And that's exactly why it shows customer ID. Now we could even choose more than two at this point. Uh, so you can add as many as you wanted to really, and, and we could even do it later on. So I'm going to close this window. So now we're going to pick on some fields from both tables, which is the purpose why you would uh, make a query from more than one table. So I'm going to double click on customer ID, company name. I'm just double clicking on the fields, of course, contact name, contact title. I'll come over here and I'll pick on order ID, employee ID, order date. And I'm going to come down here and I'll pick on order amount. Good. Now, uh, notice how it selected the fields. And if you look down here on the table row, notice how some of the fields are from the customer's table and some of the fields are from the order's table. Now, it's going to know which, order, which orders go with which customer because of that link based on the customer ID field. Let's go ahead and run that. Uh, so notice how there's a, there might be a few orders for each customer. The customer information is the same for these first couple records, but notice how the order ID starts to be different and the order amount starts to be different because one customer can have more than one order. We call that a one to many. So it shows all of the orders for that one customer, uh, which is what I was expecting to happen. Now let's see how many records that it has. It has 830 records. Now I'm gonna come over here and pick on design view. Now, let's see some other um, ways to use this relationship. I'm going to double click on this arrow uh, on the line right there. We can call the line the link or the join or the relationship. So I'm going to double click on that. And uh, we get this new window. Here it says only include where, rows where the join fields from both sides are equal. We call that an inner join. That means it's only going to show the records on the customer's table, but also has a matching record on the order's table. They have to match on both sides. This next one says include all records from customers and only those records from orders where the join fields are equal. We call that a left adder join. That means it'll show all the records from the customer's table, even if they don't have a match on the order side. Then the third one says include all records from the orders table and only those records from the customer's table where the join fields are equal. We call that a right adder join. That would show all of the records from the orders table even if they don't have a matching record on the customer's table. So when we just ran it, it's the top one. And I'll click on OK. And I'm going to run that. And notice that we have 830 records like we talked about before. So if I go to the last record, it'll say 830. Now, let's see if that's going to make a difference for us. We'll go back to design view. I'm going to double click on that line. This time, I'll pick on the second choice. This is going to show all of the records from the customer's table, even if they don't have a matching record on the order side. We're going to run that. Notice this time, we have 832 records. So somewhere there must be a customer that doesn't have any um, related order records. So if I scroll down, actually what we'll do is we'll sort on the order ID field. I'm going to right click on this order ID and I'll say sort smallest to largest. Notice how these two 
actually are showing us that these two customers have a, or, uh, an entry in the customer's table, but they don't have an entry in the orders table. And that's why it showed up in this uh, type of relationship. These two records up top did not show in the, uh, in the first time that we ran the query that was called an inner view or inner joint. So let's go back to design view. Now let's see if it makes a difference if I double click on that line and use the third choice, include all records from the orders table, even if they don't have a matching, matching record in the uh, customer's table. Now remember the first one that we ran had 830 records. And this one also has 830 records. So that's telling me there's no records in the orders table that do not have a match in the customer's table. They all have a match. So actually, I'm gonna go back and make it the first one. I just wanted to show you that <coughs> those choices can give you a difference. So I'll pick on OK. Now we'll be back to running the 830 records, as you can see. Now, it was able to, they made it an inner join based on the customer ID field. They found that common field. Let's see what happened if that line was not there. I'm going to click on that line and delete it. Now, it's a two-table query, but the table is no longer joined. When I run it this time, now we have 75,530 records. Now we have a serious problem. And if I scroll down, you'll start to see a lot of duplicates. Uh, like here is 107 many, many times. I mean, 10707 is there many times. So before it knew which customer goes with which order. Now it doesn't. So it gives you every possible customer record for every possible order record. So let's go back and fix that. If the relationship was not there, then you'd have to add the relationship in there. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to pick up the customer ID field from this table. And I'm going to drag it to the customer ID over here in this table. And now that line is back again. Now, you always want to pick a field. It's always nice when they have the same field names, but they don't have to have the same field names. They have to have the same data type and they have to have the same data. So you couldn't join a text field to a number field. Uh, they have to be the same data type and the data has to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And now you can see we're back to our result of 830 records, which is good. Now, let's say you have an existing query and you want to add a new table to an existing query. Here's what you would do about that. You're going to, uh, on the top of the window, you'll pick on design and you'll come over here and you pick on show table. By the way, another way to get to the show table window is to right click on this gray space over here. If I right click there, then you'll see that'll be another way to get the show table. So either way is fine, either up here or you can right click in the gray space and, and find the word show table. Now we can find another table. So we could have added tables at the beginning, or you can also add tables uh, on existing queries as well. So this time I'll pick on the employees table by double clicking on the word employees. Good. Now that brought that in. Now I could have, I could have had even more than this. It works the same way. So I'll close that window. Notice how this time it made a join between the orders table and the uh, employees table based on the common field, the employee ID. Again, the reason that it used the employee ID is because the employee ID is a primary key in the employees table. And then also th that's the common field between those two tables. So it, it makes that assumption for us. If it doesn't make that assumption or if, if it made the, the wrong one, then you can just make up your own, of course. Now notice how the customer's table is not joined to the employee's table and they don't have to be. It would hardly ever be the case where all three of those tables are joined together. Each table only has to be joined to one other table so that uh, the relationship could uh, work, but they're not gonna be joined to all of the tables, so it would be virtually impossible. Now I can pick some fields from the employees table. So I'll pick on first name and last name. I just double clicked on those fields. Now let's see what happened down here. Notice how some of the fields are from the customer's table. If you look at the table row, some of the fields are from the orders table and some of the fields are from the employees table. I'll also get the title of the employee and I'll get the employee's phone number. 
Good. So let's go ahead and run that. Notice how we still have 830 records, but now we have fields from the customers table, the orders table, and now fields from the employees table there as well. So if we go back to design view, now we see the query has three tables. And because there's a join, at least one join for each table, then we know that it'll get the uh, appropriate records there. Let's do one more. I'm gonna right click and I'll pick on um, show table and I'll pick one that's called um, the shippers table. Now notice when I add the shippers table in, there's not a common field. So there's no link between the, that table and the other tables, but we have to really have one. Otherwise you get those duplicate records. Now in this case, I know that the um, there's a field that's called ship via in the orders uh, table, and that'll match to the uh, shipper, shipper ID in the shippers table. So this time we'll have to make it manually. I'm gonna pick on the word ship via and drag it over to the shipper ID on this table. And you can see how the orders table and the shippers table are now tied together by the shipper ID. Now I'll pick some fields from there. So I'll pick on shipper ID, company name, and a phone. Notice if you look in the uh, table row, down here we have some fields from the customers table, some field from the orders table, some field from the employees table, and some fields from the shippers table. Now notice how the shippers table is only joined to the orders table. So each table only needs one link to one other table. They don't have to be linked to each other, to all of them. In fact, that would be pretty much impossible. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick on run. Now we still have the 830 records as you can see, but now I have fields in the customer's table, the order's table, the employee's table, and also the shipper's table as we can see. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this query and we'll save that and I'll call it uh, customers with orders, All right? Now we see that query over here. If I go back to design view for that query, you can see how it has the multiple tables. So you can either add tables at the beginning when you make the query, or you can use the show table uh, icon to add more tables. And you're always looking for those common fields. And then you'll be very successful in making a, a, a query for more than one table in Microsoft Access. And then each one of those lines can be double clicked so that you would get this extra screen from where that's where you can tell the type of uh, the type of relationship and you saw before that does make a difference. I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to make a, a query with more than one table in Microsoft Access.